Oh, hello and welcome to today's Learning and Development Leadership Live, your weekly micro-learning where we take today's biggest L&D topics and look at them from a slightly different perspective. And I will be honest, it has been quite a while since I've done a live video. So we're going live on Facebook, we're going live on LinkedIn, and we're going live on YouTube. So let me know if you're joining me today as well, because I've got the comments right here. Um, and whether you're interacting live time or whether you're watching the replay, it doesn't matter because this post has the ability to help someone in the future who's looking up today's topic quite quitting. So if you have insights or a perspective that you would like to share to be able to help a future person having a look at this post, make sure you comment below. And if it happens to be a while we're live, amazing, you and I can have a conversation. And if not, the comments, we will have a conversation there as well. So today's topic, quiet quitting, what is it, why does it matter, and um, what can we do about it? If you don't know me, my name is Lindsay Lee Hobson, and I work with forward-thinking organisations to elevate their emerging leaders and create the ultimate next generation of leadership. And I know fundamentally, as an emerging leader myself, that if you truly want to take today's young adults and turn them into tomorrow's innovative leaders, then you must be demonstrating emerging leadership in your life in some way, shape or form today. And if you're following me here on social media, you may or may not have seen some of the ways that I'm doing that myself. But if there's one thing I truly appreciate as an emerging leader, it's that one individual can only have so much information here in their noodle. And together, Together we can change the world. So if you're joining me here live in the studio, comment below. I can see some little eyeballs popping up because I'm just that stalkerish. So make sure you comment and say hi so you can join in with me. And whether you're watching the recording, hashtag recording, and we can have a conversation in the comments because you just don't know who will be helped by your insights moving forward. So quiet quitting, what is it? Well, New York Times defines it as quitting, going above and beyond in your job description in the workplace. And others define it as rejecting the notion that work has to take over your life, that you can't say goodbye at 5 p.m. and that you really have to live and breathe your career and nothing else. And that means falling into just ticking the boxes and being compliant and just doing what your job description entails. And if you have a different definition, different definition, let us know in the comments below. But if you've seen the recent Gallup the State of the Global Workforce Report, the 2022 copy. And if you're a learning and development LinkedIn group, learning and development professional, there's a copy in the LinkedIn group. Or let us know and we can comment a link below so you can grab a copy too because it's phenomenal. Highly recommend having a look. If you've had a look at that report, that you'll know that Gallup has reported only 21% of the world workforce are engaged. And it gets worse if you're in Australia, it's actually just 17%. So that means 83% of the world workforce are disengaged at work. And this began in early 2021 and went hand in hand with the rise in resignations. So as the great resignation began to unfold, so did the workforce engagement level. Why does that even matter though? Because engagement goes hand in hand with productivity. And as the world economy begins to slow down, productivity levels are actually becoming a major concern for executives. It was reported recently that this is actually really expensive concern. In fact, disengaged workers are costing on, est oh, sorry, reportedly 7.8 trillion in their loss of productivity, which is a scary thought. And then see little eyeballs popping up. If you're joining me live, make sure you comment and say hi, otherwise hashtag replay. And not only that, not only is it expensive, but company cultures are sacred and they often fall into the lowest common denominator. So if you're allowing quiet quitting to happen in your workplace, you're breeding complacency. And that's not an amazing place to be. So while quiet quitting is happening on all levels within a business, regardless of seniority and regardless of age, today I'm going to focus on my area of expertise, which is emerging leaders. Emerging leaders. And if you're watching this, whether it's live or in the recording, make sure that you comment and share your area of expertise with us as well and the insights you have on quiet quitting because one individual can only have so much information in the noodle, but together we can change the world. And you have no idea what your comment and who your comment may help in the future. So remember to pay it forward. First of all, for emerging leaders, remember that knowledge is power. So the great Australian dream is no longer held by the majority. 
what is the great Australian dream? So it's the career, the house, the fancy car, the getting married, the having the white picket fence. The great American dream is basically the same thing. Regardless of whether you're American or Australian, it is no longer held by the majority. In fact, lifestyles like minimalism and being a digital nomad are on the up and up to the point where, I don't know if you've seen this, but you can actually get a digital nomad passport around the world. And that's becoming more popular, which means that it's becoming more socially acceptable, which means that Gen Zs and the younger end of the millennial spectrum are finding new ways to make money that go hand in hand with these lifestyles that they're creating. And they have more options than ever before too. So they're making oodles of money on YouTube and through seasonal work while they live their van life and travel the country and content creation and becoming a VA. And with options like this, when someone enters your business, your workforce, they're usually there for one of two reasons. Because they think that's what they're supposed to be doing and they haven't had the space or the experience in life to figure out what they really want to do. So they go with what they think they should or what they're being told they should be doing. Or they seriously want to be there. It is their dream. It is their passion. They're there with you because it is what they want to do. But regardless, don't be the reason that they start to second guess themselves. Don't be the reason that they start to think, and hey, whoever's joining me, thanks for the love heart. Don't be the reason that they start to go, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe this is not what I want. And so quiet quitting is a crisis now because we've had two years during the pandemic sitting at home with a lot of thinking time. And those doubts begin to creep in. And when those doubts creep in, it's often human behaviour to pull back and think and disengage from what they're doing. And hence you get quiet quitting. And thanks so much for joining me, guys. If you are watching live, make sure you comment your insights as well because many minds are better than one. And if you're watching the recording, hashtag recording and make sure you join along too. Second knowledge of power is contrary to popular belief, emerging leaders are actually very driven and highly intellectual. I don't know. They love problem solving and puzzles and games and thinking about the world in a totally different way. And I know the stereotype is there but it comes from them often not knowing or having the life experience to focus that attention to focus that intellect to focus that drive so they get stuck in the first thing that comes to mind and that's their phone the first thing they see and that's their phone and yet they love these games and just like many of us they thrive in positive reinforcements and that feeling it when you climb into bed at the end of the day and you're thinking I have done a great job. I owned that. I made a difference. So if they show up for work and all they have to do is tick some boxes and when they do, nothing happens, there's no positive reinforcement. Where's the stimulation for that? Where's the puzzle for them to solve? Where's the game they need to, they need to win? How are they going to unlock what they're doing and go to the next level? If that's not there, that ability for to take ownership, that stimulation, that ability for them to go and say, hey, this is something that's going to keep me interested for a long period of time, then your culture is breeding compla complacency. And you may be thinking, because I would be thinking this if I was you, I don't have time to babysit. Like I just want them to show up and do their jobs. But that is literally what we have all been doing regardless of age. In fact, 80% of the population are doing it and they're calling it the quiet quitting crisis. So I haven't got any comments with me here live time. Make sure you pop your comments in hashtag replay because you just never know what your insights, are how your insights are going to support someone who's looking for help on quiet quitting. And make sure to join me next week. And if you're an L&D professional and you're not part of the forum and you would love these sorts of insights from your peers on a monthly basis, then comment below and let me know because I will let you into the forum. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.